How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and today I want to show you how to swap out a circuit breaker. Now this could be because you have a failed circuit breaker, it keeps doing nuisance trips on you and you just want to try out a new breaker to see if those nuisance trips go away. Number two, possibly you're installing a new circuit so you need to install a new breaker or number three, like my instance, you might have a couple circuit breakers that you want to move. I have these two 20 amp 120 volt breakers that I need to move to the top so I can install this 240 volt 30 amp breaker right at the bottom which is going to allow me to install what's called an interlock so I can connect up a gen set or additional power supply to my home just in case we have a power outage and I want to power the critical appliances in my home. So let's jump into it starting off with how do we actually safely remove the cover? It's best practice to go ahead and hit your main disconnect. And then you'll have six mounting screws usually. So I'll start at the bottom and work my way up. I want to remove the bottom row and the middle row, set those off to the side, and then work on this last row while starting to apply pressure to the actual cover. Now I'll support the cover when I remove this last mounting screw, ensuring the color does not fall and especially doesn't fall back into the panel. Why that's so critical is even though we did turn off our main disconnect and we see our non-contact voltage tester indicates no power coming into any of our breakers, will you still have hot conductors here at the bottom or top coming from your meter base? Starting off where we had that failed circuit breaker and we just wanna swap it out with a new one and hopefully that solves our problem. It's really straightforward, but there's a couple things we need to consider. Even before I go get my replacement breaker, I do like to remove my failed breakers so I can use that as a reference down at the hardware store. And I'm just gonna remove the conductor from under the screw terminal. And now I'm gonna, these two I'm gonna move, so I'm turning both of those out, and it's really as easy as just rocking that breaker out of the panel. On this side, you're connecting to the bus bar, and then on this side, it's just a mounting bracket that you can remove the breaker from now. So why you'll actually want to take this with you is the brand Square D. That is not all you need to know. There's actually two different types of Square D that will have significantly different mounting points for your bus bar and then also this retainer clip or how it mounts to the actual panel. This is called a QO, but Square D also makes a home line. Now, you might actually have a Siemens panel or a GE panel, so it's just better to bring the failed component with you to make this a one-trip project then replacement is really that easy. You'll start off by actually clipping the breaker into the panel, not to the bus bar, but actually pressing the breaker into the left-hand side. And then once that's set, you'll go ahead and just rock that back into place onto the bus bar. And then with that breaker secured, we'll go ahead and put our conductor back under the plate. Now we're not going directly under the screw terminal, but there's actually a plate which you wanna make sure your conductor is under. And then it's not a bad idea to actually with your fingers or pliers like this to hold that conductor in place, making sure it does not back out while you tighten it up. And also aligns, there's two detents on the top and bottom so you can tighten that up and get a secure hold. So the second example we said, installing a new circuit. The same exact process applies. The only other thing you might need to do is remove a few blanks, one or two, depending on how many circuits you're adding, removing those from your cover. All you do is just use your pliers, twist your blank back and forth, and then that will break right off so you can open up those new spots for your breakers. I am moving two breakers, so I'm gonna break off both of those blanks to make room on my panel. So moving these two breakers was very straightforward and easy, and then I'm just gonna put this guy into place as that project's coming up here in the near future. But what happens if you wanted to move originally a breaker from up top 
to bottom. So in that case, you'd have your conductor short and you want to extend it out here. The way I usually do that is with Wago 221 lever nuts. So I would just bring a longer, same gauge conductor in, close that Wago two pin lever nut, and then just double back that wire, extending it out now to the lower part of my panel. Now that can get a little busy with these wire connectors. Wago 221 lever nuts I think work a lot better than wire nuts, but now there's an even better way. This is pretty new to the US market, but it is a butt splice from Wago. So if we had that same hot conductor, we want it extended out, there's no more doubling back because this is gonna be a butt splice that's just gonna continue that wire straight down. And then that's gonna be about as small of a package as you're gonna get. So to me, this is much better than wire nuts, even better than those two pin Wagos because the, this is called a 2401. And you can look at a link in the description, which will jump you over to my Amazon store. And if you look in the electrical section, there's a 90 piece kit, which is a great way to start off with Wago lever nuts. And it actually has these 2401 butt splices included with the two wire, three wire, and five wire, which is pretty much gonna cover any DIY electrical application. So now we're ready to put the cover back on. And again, you want to take your time to make sure it does not fall back into the panel. So usually what I do is I'll take the cover, get it set in place, aligning that with my breakers, and then I will go ahead and press that against the wall with two screws in my hand, which I'll manually get started. Then I'll go ahead and snug those up, not completely tightening them yet, and then place my four other screws in the cover. Now with the cover back in place, last thing to say, if you move things around and now you have an opening, you have a slot that is not covered, remember to get some filler plates and insert those in so you do not have a bus bar that could be reached with a tool poking through and connecting to that bus bar. That would be an unsafe condition that you do not want in your home. Now it seems like we have an ever increasing need for electrical loads in our house with electric cars and the more common electric appliances replacing some of the older gas appliances. Now you might have a filled panel like I do and maybe have some additional needs with electric cars becoming popular and also electric appliances replacing gas appliances, it seems like we have an ever increasing need for electrical capacity in our homes. If you're trying to figure out the best path, I have two different videos for you. This one right here, Joel Walsman from Electric Pro Academy will walk you through installing a sub panel. And this one right here, there's actually a safe way, according to code, how to bring two circuits into one breaker. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next videos. Take care.